Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. Thank you very much for choosing to watch Overanalyzed Adventures. So let's go ahead and pick up right where we left off. This once grand noble hero with a cool part is a fraud. Turns out he actually didn't destroy Lord Sinister. Instead, he just was in the right place at the right time. And you know how we figured this out? Well, he just told us for no particularly good reason. I don't know, maybe he had one too many. If you really want to know about Lord Sinister, Ask Brother Kunshin at the monastery. He can tell you anything you'd need to know. Or I could just go ahead and give you the gist of it right here and right now. You see, Lord Sinister used to be a member of the Order of the Thorn. Yeah, the really goody good guys. But he turned evil. Perhaps the Order of the Thorn should have done more background checks on a guy named Lord Sinister. But nevertheless, he turned all evil because he was searching for a place called Avalon. And he wanted to because supposedly the legendary hero that set up the Order of the Thorn fled there for whatever reasons. I don't know, to pull off the whole Christ-like figure thing, perhaps. But nevertheless, that's a gist of it. There used to be a good guy, he turned bad, tried to find a legendary place, and ended up inadvertently killing himself. Harada self-defeating villains. But nevertheless, we still gotta go to the library because we gotta learn about those balls of fur that are apparently made out of razors. I know, how do they mate? Librarian, I believe I could use your help. Oh? What can I do for you? I saw several very strange creatures in the swamp on my travels. My, oh my! You must have seen some raptors or maybe some sloths. I think so. I'm not sure though. Well, raptors are big lizard-like creatures, and sloths are basically razor blades covered in a round mass of matted fur. Yes, those are what I saw. Well, tell me about the raptor first. I was looking for the queen in there, and I saw one, standing dead still and staring at me. Yes, that's typical behavior for the female of the species. I have a book about them. I may be able to find some more information about them. Follow me. The librarian pulls a book from the shelf and starts reading. Ah, yes, they can be strange creatures. Their main diet is chicken, or things that taste like chicken, <laughs> which, as you know, is most anything. <laughs> Raptors and sloths are natural enemies. Raptors love to eat sloths. They taste like chicken? Oh, yes, especially if you batter coat them and deep fry them in oil. Delicious! I'll keep that in mind. So, raptors hate sloths and will eat them? Yes, both male and female raptors will attack them. The females are less dangerous than the males. They stand rigid when spotted, although they don't tend to attack people. They have been known to attack smaller animals, though. The males are the patrollers and sentries. They patrol their hunting grounds, and if they run across a potential predator, they knock them out with their massive front legs. Yikes. Indeed. Now, both male and female raptors look the same, so you won't be able to tell the difference by sight. Oh, pray tell, Liberian. How exactly do you tell the difference? But ambiguous biology aside, we gotta find some chicken now, so we can lure the raptor over to the sloths. Now, where exactly are we gonna find some chicken, you ask? Well, there's a bowl of chicken soup right here. Might as well just go ahead and grab it. Well, it's a rather strange request, I suppose. But the king did command we assist challengers if we could. Here you go. Please take it with my compliments. No trade necessary. I've got some housekeeping to do, bud. Yeah, we just waltz over to the shopkeeper and pick up the bowl of chicken soup. No puzzle, no dialogue tree, no nothing. He's just like, yeah, have it, man. Wow, that was really easy. So now we go back to the swamp and lure the raptor over to the sloths. The raptor lets out a loud screech and rushes towards the sleeping sloths. <laughs> Just the raptor is feeling pretty good about itself now because it just runs off. For some reason, I really wish the raptors were made out of clay. I don't know, this scene just screamed it needs claymation to me. But nevertheless, we now got access to the innermost regions of the swamp. And guess what? The swamp's one big old maze. There's a lot of backtracking, a lot of looping around, a lot of, well, frustration. But if you just take your time, you'll eventually weave your way through the maze and find what you're looking for. And what we're looking for now is the seer because, well, it's the first thing we find. These seem to be little pixie wings. You guess this is the great big monster the pixies were talking about. But unfortunately, we can't do anything with it quite yet because I didn't pick up the jar that was in the shop where we got the chicken soup. 
So, without further ado, let's meet the seer. Why won't you tell me where the queen is? Isn't that what you seers do? Tell people things? My friend, I cannot tell someone who is not willing to listen. Or someone who's on a dirtbed looking horse. Yeah, this game is beautiful, looks nice, and a lot of love and attention, yada yada yada, all the compliments out of the way. But yeah, that horse looks like it has a problem. Listen, you speak in riddles and half-truths. Just tell me, in plain language, what I need to know. So basically, this guy right here is looking for a walkthrough. And as you'd expect, this seer's like, nah, I ain't gonna do that, and leads him the wrong way. Allowing us, the real hero of the game, to have a conversation with her. Hello, seer. I don't mean to intrude. Ah, another challenger. You wish my wisdom? Well, I guess so, you know, since we're here. But she must not be that important of a character, because she doesn't have her own nifty character portrait like everyone else. Heck, that guy on the derpy horse got a character portrait, so I'm assuming he's more important than her. To be honest with you, I was just traveling through the swamp trying to find the queen. Yeah, even our boy Flynn's belittling her importance. Eh, I just ran across you, lady. I don't know if you're important to me or not, but since we're talking, I'm assuming you're probably important. Ah, candor is refreshing after spending time with that last buffoon. I am Yama Uba, seer of what has and what will. I shall aid you if I am able. You know it's mandatory for me to make a lottery joke here. <clears throat> Alright, so let me pull out my best material here. Hey, if you are psychic and can see the future, can I get the winning... Powerball numbers, please, so I can be rich. Clearly it's working out for you because you're in a shack in the middle of the swamp. Seer, I'm looking for the qu Well, I mean, she was a jerk to the first guy that asked that question. So how the hell are we going to prove our worthiness to her? How are we going to get her to reveal this very important information that could end this game for us? Well, we have to play a mini game for her. That's right. We got to prove our worth to this lady by playing a mini game. Add these potions to the cauldron as I require them. This is your task. Mm. This is an odd decision. You have a unique way of approaching things. Your quest is hidden or changed. You will need help for you to see. That is all I see. So yeah, I managed to turn the cauldron a poopa brown color and that mumbo jumbo came out of the seer's mouth. I don't know if any of it's really important, but yay, we're progressing in the game. And oh yeah, she gave us some weird freaky juice that's in her hut for free. Cause again, we turned the cauldron a poopa brown color. We are the legendary hero of lore. Opening the chest, you reach in and grab the flask of Ueli juice. So, we're going to need to do something with this ukulele juice, or however you say it. Essentially, this stuff is used to make a restoration potion. That and the watermelon that we picked up from those kind strangers very early on in the game. And naturally, that means we have to go back to the potion maker, and yeah, she'll make us the potion. Oh, Yuli juice. Now I can add some watermelon juice, seeds, and now we have a restore potion. There is one final step you must do, however, Finn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we gotta do is grope this potion up against some crystals and then bada bing, bada boom, we got a functioning potion. And yeah, also her and Ted are madly in love. They're gonna get married or whatever and live happily ever after. And yes, Ted's still wearing his raincoat indoors. That's gotta be pretty hot. But okay, let's go ahead and make this potion thing work. You retrieve the potion. Yahoo! We got the potion! And what we gotta do with this potion, you ask? Well, <laughs> it's pretty self-evident. You see, we gotta use the potion on that wilted flower we found earlier, and then we gotta plant the flower in front of this sad tree. Here, just watch it. You pour the contents of the restoration potion over the flower. Instantly, you see its wilted petals unfurl and the vibrant colors return. 
you bend down and dig a small hole, planting the revitalized flower in the fertile soil. Hopefully, this flower will provide company to the lonely tree. You notice a change in the demeanor of the tree. It seems like something is happening. The tree looks absolutely overjoyed. Between your music and his new friend, you can tell he'll let you pass and get the berries. You take some of the Ferin berries. Yeah, yes, we got Ferin berries now. I don't really remember what I was supposed to do with this. Oh, wait, I'm supposed to go back to the seer and give them to her for some reason. Yeah, I haven't been paying the most of attention. I've been clicking through some dialogue, I'm afraid. But on the way to the seer, I did manage to pick up the spider by using the glass jar that I got from the chicken soup shopkeepy. He just wanted a mushroom for it, which I found by just wandering around the woods. Wasn't a particularly difficult puzzle. But nevertheless, armed with a spider in a jar and a berry, I think we can finally settle up our business in the swamp. Ah, oh, you found some Pyrrhean berries. Excellent young bard, for they can tell us the final piece of your mission. You drop the berries into the cauldron where they melt away, turning the liquid into a rich red color. The seer stares intently into the cauldron. I see the future. The shadows are parting and the mist is lifting. I see you helping a man find love and a woman find happiness. I see you talking with your fellow competitors, some helpful, others not. And I see you saving the lives of two lovely young ladies by helping an ungrateful dwarf. Yes, this is the one. One of your allies in this event is our queen disguised. Play a song, a song of clarity and truth, and all will be as it is. That is all I see. The mists have closed in again. A song of clarity and truth? What could that be? Brother Kunchen of the Order of the Thorn could help you there. Alright, so it does sound like the game is wrapping things up. It recapped what we've done up till now, and it told us where to go to get the final piece of the puzzle to get the queen revealed. Go talk to that guy in the monastery and he'll give us a fresh new jam that we can play to something to reveal where the queen is. But before we're done in the swamp, we should probably go ahead and grab the harp for the pixies. They're just kind of down below where the seer's house is, inside a raptor's nest. You take the harp from the nest, knowing that returning this to the pixies will bring your precious songbook back to you. All right, now we can get our precious songbook back. Here you go, I found your harp. Silly bard. Now we have your book and our harp. Hey, you promised you'd return my songbook if I found your harp. Try and make us if you can. <laughs> yeah, hero, just keep getting bullied by pixies. All right, I'll get you out of this one. You see that spider that we captured in the jar? Well, let's unleash it on the tree. Well, I gave you a chance. You open the jar and hold it against the tree, and the spider crawls out. Get it away! Get it away! Return the book, and I'll remove the monster. Yes, yes! Take it away! The book first, Pixie. Thank you. Now, do as you promised. Take it away! It will eat us! You take the spider and release it into the grass. There. It's gone now. Now you go too! Bad Bard, tricking us into giving you our pretty book. You haven't learned a thing, have you? Oh well, I got my book back. Well, let's see now. I think that pretty much wraps up all the major quests we have. Yeah, that pretty much does it. We just gotta find the queen now. And we're gonna do that on the next episode of Order of the Thorn. The final episode too. Pretty exciting stuff, folks. We're about done with this puppy.